Welcome to this video on using try and catch in Java. My name's Andy Wicks and in this video I'm going to show you a clever little technique that will help ensure that your users aren't frustrated by their own little errors. I've got three programs here that will illustrate the point. I'm going to be using the command prompt because the third of these programs uses args. OK, let's start at the beginning. I have here a program that asks the user to enter two pieces of information. You and I know that what's being entered should be integers because it says so in the program, but the user may not know that. So let's see this program working. Now I've already compiled it, so I'm now going to run it from Java, and it asks me to input a value. I'm going to enter 3. It asks me for another value, 5. And it says the total is 8. Its arithmetic is good. So that's fine. From the programmer's point of view, the program works. But what about the user? Well, supposing I run that program again, and the user isn't really watching what's being said, and they type in 3 and Andy. Oh, bother. There's something called a number format exception. A number format exception in English is something that you and I would understand as I don't know, I'm expecting a number, but I didn't get one. So please help me out. Well, we do that in add to. In add to, I've got a try and catch. Try and catch are excellent for spotting this sort of error. Here I have in the try bit the bit of program I want to see working. But we know what users are like and users may do something silly. So if they do something silly I want to catch that silliness and let the program continue on in a sensible way. So since I've got a number format exception up here I'm going to catch a number format exception down there. Now you might expect that there is some clever list of these exceptions that you've got to remember. No, there isn't. What you've got to do is put yourself in the position of a user who is maybe not paying attention to say it politely. In practice some users are simply malicious. So you've got to trap all the possible errors that they might make. What you do is you, you run your program making those errors and you look for the exception types that are generated. You can then catch those exceptions. So let me show you this program running. I'm going to run add 2 and here I'm going to put in 3 and Andy just the way I did in the previous program and it fell over. Only this time it asked me to enter two whole numbers, not just one number and a name. Well it's still a problem generated by a poor prompt. Uh, please input a number would be a much better prompt than just input question mark. But the principle holds true. Now there are several things that the user could do wrong. In this third program, we're getting the arguments from the command line. So if I type in add 3, it's actually expecting some arguments, args 0 and args 1. But it won't find them because I'm not typing them in. So let's press enter. Exactly two whole numbers are needed, not just one or even more than two. Now let's try that again. Let's see if the program works with 3 and 5. The total is 8. OK, the program works. Let's try it again with, say, 3 and Andy. You entered text instead of two whole numbers. It's worked it out. That's good. Let's try it the other way round. Andy and 3. What happens? Oh, yep, you entered text instead of two whole numbers. It's caught it again. 
And what happens if I enter two lots of text? Andy and Asif. You enter text instead of two whole numbers. The program is now working properly. It's not crashing. And that's all because of the try and catch. And you can catch as many types of error as your imagination will allow you to think up. And do be inventive, because your users certainly will be.